Donald Trump, president of the United States, and the main reason McDonald's signs say billions and billions served. There was some big, crazy Trump news today. And I know we say that every day, but this time it's true. I mean, it's true every day, but this time it's also true. And it starts with the president and his administration making a shocking legal maneuver. This morning, an unprecedented move by the Justice Department, stepping in to replace President Trump's private legal team to represent him in a high-profile defamation lawsuit. It means American taxpayers would foot the bill for the government defending the president in the suit by author E. Jean Carroll, who says the president raped her more than two decades ago in a dressing room at New York's Bergdorf Goodman's. The latest move protects the president from any potentially embarrassing disclosures. Justice Department lawyers argue that because the president was, quote, acting within the scope of his office at the time of his denial, he could be defended by government attorneys. Wow, wow, we wow. The Justice Department is now defending Trump in a defamation suit against one of his rape accusers. Which means taxpayer dollars are paying for this. And you know that's gonna make a lot of people mad. Our taxes shouldn't be going to this. They should be used to fund schools, to build roads, and to drone weddings in Afghanistan. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes, this is unprecedented for a president. But I can't say I'm surprised at this point because Trump has basically turned the government into his own personal concierge service. Like all the Department of Transportation does anymore is order Ubers for Trump. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if the border wall turns out to be one side of Trump's new country house. Okay, now we need another wall and another one. Now let's throw in a roof and a pool and we'll finally be safe from Mexico. Now, the Justice Department's justification for defending Trump in this case is that when he said he didn't rape her because, quote, she wasn't his type, end quote, he did that as part of his official duties as president. And I know that sounds wild, but remember what it says in Article 2 of the Constitution. The president shall execute the laws, command the military, and vehemently deny boning anyone who's less than a 10. But hey, conservatives wanted someone to run the country like a business. And what's more corporate than a CEO using company resources to shut down sexual abuse accusations? You did it, guys. So once again, we have big, crazy news that in normal times would be all anyone talked about for a month. But because it's Trump, it's not even the only scandal that we have to talk about today. Now, you might remember, Back in February and March, Donald Trump was very confidently saying that the coronavirus was not a big deal and it was basically just like the flu. But since then, we've all learned that that was bullshit. Well, today it's come out that Trump privately knew that it was bullshit. Stunning breaking news. President Trump, in his own words, making clear he knew about the dire threat of the coronavirus very early on, at a time he repeatedly told the American people they were safe. He deliberately withheld information from the American people, repeatedly concealed details about the gravity of this threat because, in his words, he didn't want to create a panic. It's a very tricky situation. It's, uh, it, it, goes, it, it goes through air, Bob. That's always tougher than the touch. You know, the touch, you don't have to touch things, right? But the air, you just breathe the air. That's how it's uh, passed. Uh, it's also more deadly than your... You know, your, even your strenuous flus. This is five per, you know, this is 5% versus 1% and less than 1%. You know, so this is deadly stuff. I think, Bob, really, to be honest with sure, you. Sure, I want you to I be. wanted to, uh, I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to create a panic. You didn't want to create a panic? You didn't want to create a panic? So what did you want? For people to very calmly be dying in the streets? <coughs> What's wrong, buddy? I'm dying. But it's chill. And also, since when is Donald J. Trump concerned about creating a panic? That is literally his favorite thing. Cities are burning, suburbs are collapsing, caravans of Antifa Mexicans are committing Muslim voter fraud. His campaign slogan is basically, look out behind you. But yes, Thanks to audio tapes of interviews Trump did with Bob Woodward back in February and March, we now know that he was fully aware of how the virus was transmitted and how deadly it could be. And yet in public, he told everyone there was no reason to be afraid. And look, 
I get that as a leader, you don't want people to panic, but you also want to inform the people so that they can be safe. You know, if a plane is crashing, a pilot will tell you to remain calm, but they'll also tell you to fasten your seatbelts and brace for impact. If Trump was a pilot, he'd be like, Attention all passengers, everything's fine. Seatbelts are for snowflakes. And if you want to stretch your legs, now's the perfect time. Bye-bye. And this is really confusing because at first, I thought Trump was too stupid to understand what was going on with the virus. But it turns out that he was actually smart about it in private. But he's also stupid enough to tell Bob Woodward on tape. Huh. Now I don't know what to think. And Trump aside, am I the only one who thinks it's crazy that people keep releasing books where they reveal that they've known the most incriminating things about Trump, but they only tell us about it now? I mean, imagine if Paul Revere had this attitude. Are the British coming? Find out by pre-ordering my book on Amazon. So, Trump purposefully obscuring the threat of COVID-19 was the major revelation that took over the news today. But remember, Bob Woodward interviewed Trump 18 times for this book, and he recorded Trump on tape talking about plenty of other subjects too, like racism. And believe it or not, it turns out that in private, Trump is a lot more aware of racism than he acts like in real life. I got Do you it. think there is systematic or institutional racism in this country? Well, I think there is everywhere. I think probably less here than most places or less here than many places. Okay, but is it here in a way that it has an impact on people's lives? I think it is, and it's unfortunate, but I think it is. Whoa. Somebody finally got around to watching Get Out. It really is interesting how private Trump seems to know a lot more than public Trump. I mean, this whole time, I thought there were gonna be secret tapes of Trump saying the N-word. Instead, we got secret tapes of him being an epidemiologist with a PhD in critical race theory. And you might be thinking, oh, but this is good news, Trevor. It means that Trump isn't as dumb as we thought. No, this is terrible news. Because you know what it shows? It shows you that Donald Trump is willfully misleading the public. It reminds you that he's a con man. He lies about coronavirus to protect his economy and his reelection. And he ignores systemic racism because he knows it exists, but he does it to protect his image with his base. And then when all the bad stories pile up, what does he do? He tries to drown them out with some crazy news announcement, like him saying that he's gonna appoint Ted Cruz to the Supreme Court, which to be honest, just sounds like a threat to the Supreme Court. So once again, we're reminded today that Donald Trump doesn't care about America. He cares about himself. He cares about his money, and he cares about two-fifths of his family. And that's it.